Whew. It's been extremely hot this year. And we are way behind in getting our garden protected from this heat. Now, usually we would have already done this months ago. However, we just got delayed by different tasks on the homestead. So we're gonna show you three ways that we protect our garden from the extreme heat. Let's get growing. Now there's different colors of shade cloths. The black and green shade cloth absorbs the heat. It also protects your garden from the harmful UV rays. And with the black and green shade cloth, it will filter some of the light. Now with the white shade cloth, it's gonna help reflect some of that heat, diffuse some of that UV rays, and reduce the amount of light coming through showing onto your garden. And if you have it in the greenhouse, it would definitely lower the temperatures in the greenhouse. Now these come in all different shapes and sizes and range anywhere from 20% to 90% shade to protect on your garden. Now what we're installing, as you're seeing today, is a 60% shade cloth. And it's the measurements of about 25 by 25 feet. Now what we did is since this is our first time on this property using the shade cloth, unlike what we did at our previous property, is we had concrete in a five gallon bucket with some anchors and with a four by four post attached to it. And at the very top of it, we're gonna have some eye bolt. Now, once we attach the shade cloth on there, we're going to hook it with some UV protected zip ties. And this is gonna give us the freedom to move it anywhere that we want. What we're going to do on here as well to kind of keep it from teeter totter, we're gonna add some uh, hooks here and then strap it as a tension wire so that way on all four corners or all four posts so that way it won't fall either way like that so we have a sag in the middle and we're gonna try a little trick remedy to at least give it a little pitch and put this rod in and zip tie it to the T post there. And we did that at our old garden too. Yeah. About three years ago, I visited one of the people that we followed on Instagram, Seeds and Dreams, because she lived in Garland with us. And I learned from her to use clay spikes. And that has saved us a lot of heat stress on our plants, especially our tomatoes and our jalapeno plants. So I always take the spike, I put it right into the dirt. I have a bunch of wine bottles that I actually bought empty on Amazon and I fill them up with water and I just kind of watch it. And the clay spike, it'll just emit enough water for the plant to drink up what it needs as it needs it. We really use this for containers, especially because they just dry out a lot faster. We have found here in our new property that our soil is really nice and moist for everything that we have planted in there and we haven't found a need to use these for the in ground, but it's definitely something that our containers need. Now, if you have high temperatures, you want to water in the morning. And if you have the extreme heat, once your temperatures get above 100 degrees, it's okay for you to water in the evening evening time as well. Now you can hand water, you can use drip irrigations, you can use a sprinkler system, uh, but you just want to be mindful that you're, you don't want the leaves to be wet during the hot time of the day because you can scorch your leaves. So when you're hand watering, it allows you to control how much water your plant is actually getting. With a soaker, it decreases the chances of anything evaporating from your soil. This bed isn't doing as good as that other bit. I noticed. I don't know why. They both got the same mix. Yeah. That watermelon, I think, is doing the best one. Yeah, out this of both. one's doing the best. Both of these, actually. So after watering, you want to conserve that moisture as long as possible in this extreme heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to add mulch. 
Now, before we get into mulching, we want to know what methods are you using to protect your garden from the extreme heat? Now, you could use just about anything for mulch. Like for instance, if you just cut your yard, you could use grass clippings. If you got some wood chips, you can use that. If you have a lot of paper, you could shred that paper. You could use straw or hay. And what we normally do is we use compost. Now, when you're using any type of mulch, you wanna make sure it's at least about two to four inches. So the mulch is gonna help keep your soil cooler longer and it's going to keep the soil nice and moist so you don't have to water as much. So the reason why you want to protect your garden from the extreme heat because once your plants feel that certain temperature especially like your tomatoes and your peppers if it gets above 95 degrees they're going to stop producing they're going to save that energy to survive and they're going to start dropping their blossoms and what you want to do is you want to continue that cycle so they can continue uh, blossoming so that way you can get that fruit and be able to harvest a good abundance amount of things to help uh, feed your family. Now we get asked a lot about how and when you should water your garden and your plants and we did a tutorial video about that we'll put that off to the side and down in the description below. Until the next video let's grow together.